So I'm at the boat today, finishing up some fuel projects. I uh, started messing around with the Garmin stuff because originally I had ordered the GC100 wireless Wi-Fi camera and I could not get it to work. Uh, I kept dropping the Wi-Fi. Uh, just every time I turned around it was not, you know, there was no signal and it wasn't putting a picture up there at all. So I was kind of disappointed with it, did a little reading, found out that the uh, that it's a common problem, or at least it has been a common problem. Kind of set it aside for a while, was doing some reading and some studying on it, found that there was an update for it that Garmin had come out with, and it's actually been a while, I think it was like 2018 or 2019, 2020, I don't remember, but it's been a while. So I looked up how to do the update, and it is a firmware update or whatever the, the update to the camera itself not not this system uh, so it was an update through that so you had to do that by using a PC follow the instructions so if you if you do a search on you know Garmin GC 100 update it'll take you to a Garmin page and it gives you explicit instructions how to do it which were very easy so inserted this into the computer did the download um, it then has a file on your computer. You click on the file and it will download it onto this. And then you take this to the boat and you could put it in the back of your chart plotter. On this one, it's a 923 XSV. There's two slots in the back. But I opted on this one to get the card reader. So I just put it in there. Went in here and went to... I don't even know where I went. I went somewhere in here, camera, or, or just started uploading. I can't even remember what it did and then did the download to the GC100 and then I pulled it back out of the box uh, well actually when I did this I just had it wired but when I had it wired I had the power coming out of this regular old old school you know 12 volt uh, plug the old cigarette lighter style plug and when I did that it uh, still didn't work so I, I, I set it up did the download updated the software that was successful and uh, it still didn't work. The Wi-Fi kept cutting off. The whole thing kept cutting off. I'd look over here and it was just a black screen where the, the camera was. And so I was disappointed. I was like, ah, well, this isn't going to work. Because there are quite a few complaints about this. And, you know, it is Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi can be a little finicky. So I went ahead and got the GC200 IP camera. That's the best one they had. And I wanted a camera. And this one has, I think, infrared emitters in here for low light conditions as well so um, got that in brought it down to the boat just hooked it up here temporarily uh, and then this one actually is wired so it gets wired to power and then it splits off here and then it actually goes to the GC uh, GMS 10 and it's uh, the Garmin Ethernet um, style because there's a lot of data so usually you know anything that just needs basic signals or a certain type of signal will be uh, the NEMA 2000 but the GMS 10 uh, handles things that need a lot more data so uh, that's what I did and that worked perfect first time and then while I did that I was like you know what let me just hook this up again so I, I hooked it up again um, and then I discovered that that plug that I had really originally used, the old school 12 volt plug, the, the plug unit itself actually had a partially blown fuse in it. So when I was doing a little bit of troubleshooting on this, because uh, I was so disappointed in it, I was like, well, let me just check this voltage. And the voltage was like between 3 and 5 volts. I, I'm amazed it worked at all. But a lot of the Garmin units, they operate on a wide, you know, voltage range they're pretty voltage range they're pretty tolerant so I then disconnected the uh, this unit from the uh, old school 12 volt plug went ahead and plumbed it in there and then fired them both up side by side and now it's been all day all day I've been doing a lot of work uh, actually this is the second day first day I did it it worked all day about three hours four hours I was down here and then I came down and I just powered up all the electronics 
and they both started working again. Now it's been like five or six hours today and they're both working. And right now it's alternating between the GC100, GC200. So let's bring them both up on the larger screens and you can see the difference. Okay. So that is the GC100. It's very fisheye. That is the GC200. Very clear. I actually already made this video once. <laughs> And I was like, well, the picture on the GC200 isn't very good, but it had the little film over that that I forgot to take off. So I had to reshoot this video just now. Um, and so now you can compare the quality of the screens or the image from the GC100 to the GC200. So as you see, the GC100 is very fisheye lens and the GC200 is a very good picture um, and there are some adjustments here let's see if we can take a look here bear with me uh, that's the GC100 um, let's see let's go with the GC200 video setup so on this one, on the GC200, there's a lot more uh, things. So here's full screen. That's actually just full screen. So it's gonna, that's just for the size of the screen. Mirror, you can turn it around if you're backing in your boat or doing something weird or you know you, you need to get a, a, a mirror image. You can rotate it so when you mount that camera on its side, you know, on the side of a boat or something like that, you can rotate the image, you know, 90 degrees. 180 so that's a uh, mirror image 180 um, 270 and then 0 well I'm sorry so actually it's sitting it needs to be 180 so the way it sits it's actually supposed to be mounted upside down I suppose yeah of course it is that's why the garment's upside down all right so what else sorry about the finger there uh, it's got low light conditions which um, Obviously this is not low light, so the image is gonna be all screwed up. And you can see the IR emitters are on there. So it's still a pretty sharp image, uh, but really it should be down in the engine bay or at night outside for this to be working correctly. All right, aspect ratio, let's take a look at that stretch. Standard. That's all it has. Stretch and standard. Uh, dynamic range. Standard. I don't know what that is, and I can't really tell a difference. Why? Right, let's see. Some of these different changes take a second to kick in. So, let's see. Let's see if we can. If it's a. Uh, oops. Sorry, it's the wrong one. Dynamic range standard. Let's see if does it make it bigger. What does it do? I don't know. I can't tell a difference really. Maybe when I get this on video, I can go back and forth and see if it makes a difference. Uh, then we have brightness, saturation, contrast, sharpness, and you can rename it. So the image of the GC200 is very good. Obviously, I'm doing this with my phone, so I don't know how good you can tell. So let's uh, let's check out the compare it to the GC. 100 now video setup there's very few video setups here you got full screen mirror rotation aspect let's see what stretch that's even more fish eyed uh, standard and then rename it so this really doesn't have very many settings apparently the GC 100 was the old verb uh, when Garmin made cameras, I really wish they still made cameras, uh, action cams. I wish they still made those, uh, but they don't, except for this. A lot of people said they really like those, so let's go back. And then to have them alternate, you go to alternate, you can have them alternate every 5, 10, or 30 seconds. So let's put it on 5 so we can see it. 
close and then that screen should alternate about every five seconds or so. There we go. It takes a second for them to alternate. So basically, you know, one's a fisheye, more of a fisheye. One is a better, sharper image with probably better night vision. Uh, I'm going to have to decide where I want to put these. Obviously, the main reason why I bought one was actually to go in the engine bay. Uh, not to replace engine room checks, because you can't smell uh, and you can't see everything with a camera. Uh, but if there was some smoke or an obvious leak or a spray, you may be able to detect that on the camera. So, you know, I, I might underway might do engine checks every two hours instead of one hour or something like that but uh, or you know if even if you do it every one hour but you're cruising along and you've got your cameras alternating or maybe if one's in the engine bay and one's outside and you're not you don't need the engine bay one you just put it so it's continuously on the engine bay and you can kind of look whatever you feel like it every 10 minutes whatever it would uh, make me feel better to be able to do that not that I've had any problems or anything, but you never know when you will. Uh, the other one, I guess I'm going to put facing the rear of the boat. I want to. I would like to be able to get a better view while reversing the boat for docking, because from the upper helm, and especially the lower helm, I really can't see very well over the back deck, because the back deck, uh, the upper deck, extends pretty far. So. I really can't see a whole heck of a lot back there, especially when my wife is back there. You know, has she stepped off? Is she about to step off? Uh, what's going on? So we'll see. But the good news, number one, is it appears that the GC100, after doing the update, and the update had not been done, it seems after doing the update, it really works better. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it. I was going to just, I don't know, I wasn't going to sell it because I was under the assumption that it didn't work but I didn't know what I was gonna do I was just gonna put it on the shelf till maybe they came out with a fix or whatever um, and bought this other camera so now I got two cameras which I didn't really need um, but the GC100 after the update uh, has worked good if you have a GC100 and you haven't done the update just do a Google search GC100 update and there'll be a Garmin page and it'll tell you how to do it uh, and then, of course, now, since I have both of them, I figured I'd shoot a video so that you guys could compare them, decide which one you want to get, and why. And uh, that's for you to answer, of course. One's much more expensive. This is actually the, the cheapest camera on the left, the most expensive camera from Garmin on the right. Um, both have their positives and negatives, so we'll see. Supposedly, the range on the GC100 is supposed to be very far but we'll see I'll, I'll mess with it some more but so far so good and uh, anyways if you like this content just like and subscribe it helps the channel and uh, I like to bring this kind of stuff you know these kinds of questions that a lot of people have out there but Garmin's a little bit scarce on information and comparisons like this uh, and unless you purchase both you know, you don't really see a lot of opportunities to have a direct comparison between the two. So I figured this would be a good video for people who are trying to choose a camera and be quite helpful. So Garmin does have another camera that's in the middle of these two. It's an, I suppose it's an analog camera. Uh, there's probably things to be said for that as well. Um, but this is what we got. This is what we're working with. And hope you find it useful. All right, bye.